here in this one I'd like to show you how to use Activity Monitor to speed up your Mac. And if you're not familiar or don't know what it is, this is what the icon looks like and you can also find it in the menu of your Mac. I mean, it is always built into every Mac OS, so you will be able to find it there. And if you cannot, cannot find it in the menu sections or in the all apps sections, it's probably in the other folder as it is by default. And there the activity monitor looks like this and it pretty much does what the name suggests, like it tracks the activity. And there are a couple of sections of course. So at the top you can see CPU, memory, energy, disk and a network. And I'd say memory and a network, perhaps CPU are probably the most important. Well, when it comes to the network, it uh, tracks or monitors your internet connection. So if you tap on that, you can see how much data has been received and how much was sent. And uh, that's pretty much your internet speed. And you can always measure that really quickly using a built-in app. And when it comes to network, you cannot really make it any faster using this app. Like you cannot really make your MacBook faster or your MacBook's internet faster, but you can at least keep track of how much data has been sent and what's the, what's the speed of that. So definitely an, a handful or useful tool. But I'd say that the most important for me is the memory section, because there you can keep track of how much memory is being eaten up by all of the apps, of course, that use it. Because I can certainly say that it happened to me a lot of time. I, uh, for example, Photoshop app for me was using like 4 gigs of RAM, even though I wasn't really using it that day. And it just simply remained open from yesterday. And that's something that I didn't even realize, but it was still eating my RAM in the background. And in this section, you can keep track of that and see how much storage and RAM is being eaten up by all of the individual apps out there. And using this, you can just double click on it, then you can quit it, you can force quit it in case it, it's freezing or something. There at the bottom, you can also see a graph of the memory pressure. Preferably, it shouldn't be red by any case, but also it shouldn't really be yellow, just like you can see it's in my case. But yeah, you should keep that in like a reasonable levels. It really helps to keep the Mac fast. In my case, you can see that it's actually yellow and it shouldn't really be. And yeah, if you keep that at like green levels, then it definitely helps you out. But the whole point is that you can actually search and browse through all of the apps. And you can, of course, like I said, double click them. You can just uh, quit them completely. You can force quit them in case there's something going on. And you can just regulate the usage of uh, your actual uh, memory and uh, the RAM. At the, the bottom, you can also see how much is being used by the memory, how much are the cached files, which you shouldn't really worry about. And you also have uh, the swap files, which basically is just a uh, memory, which is like borrowed from the SSD for current RAM operations. I mean, it's not a scientific explanation, but this is just how it works. You should keep that really low, to be honest. And yeah, this app actually helps you to keep track of that and which in result makes your MacBook a lot more efficient and faster, of course. The other section is uh, the CPU, which works in a similar way, at least for the user. It just allows you to see all of the processes and it allows you to interact with them, like to quit them and to quit stuff that you don't want to be using your power anymore. But it's again a list of all of the processes and things that which use your CPU and under it you can see the percentage points of how much is the idle and what's really using is using up the system and stuff. So yeah, definitely threads, processes, everything is there written out. When it comes to energy, you can see and track the battery usage. Uh, and I wouldn't say that it's a bad tool, but there are some better options like coconut battery. I mean, it depends on what you want to do with uh, with this data or, or what exactly is your goal or what you would like to find out. But here in this section, you can see again a list of all of the apps and how much uh, battery they take up and stuff. So again, a nice uh, way to look at it. And disk is pretty much, it's not like something that you would see and browse your files, but you can see which process and which uh, apps actually write and read uh, data to your SSDs. So that's again a nice tool, but it doesn't really make your uh, Mac any faster. So that would be pretty much it. I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be. What you should take out from the video is that if you take a look at your memory section and 
uh, the CPU and the network, you can actually close out some of the apps that take up uh, the CPU or your RAM in order to ensure that your Mac actually runs faster. Because a lot of times, some things in the background keep on running and you don't even want them to. So this is a nice way how you can keep track of that and choose only those processes that you want to to eat your RAM and CPU power. And that's how you can actually make your uh, Mac faster at the end. So yes, like I say, this is pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video in case there is anything that you would like to share in the comments, please do so. I will probably reply to your comment and you can also leave a thumbs up. You can subscribe so you can see and stay tuned for more videos in the future. Hope you enjoyed this one and we can see each other in the future videos.